Why, hello! We are going to be painting this scene, these pine trees, uh, in the winter. Um, we're going to start out with a wash of ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. Uh, this is a two-color wash, actually three-color wash. I add a little bit of alizarin crimson um, to that lighter wash on the bottom. I'm just trying to get a nice gradation. As you can see, I'm holding the board... Uh, or the block, I should say, uh, on a slight angle. Now I'm just drawing it so I can um, resume with the mountain shapes. And uh, you want to try to get that pretty dry if you want a nice hard line. So it's dried now. It looks about the value I need it to be. Um, if you wanted to add a little bit more color, you can. Um, now, basically, as in the inset picture there, we're going to have a lot of trees happening and covering. But, um, but you also, you do want to have a nice gradation. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm going over everything with um, this wash now is probably a little bit of mixture of ultramarine blue, um, uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, and... And now I'm actually putting in the colors to uh, like where the trees are. If you can see, I'm probably like right along the midline of the painting, this, the, um, the mid horizontal. There's like a grouping of trees that are catching the light. Um, they're sort of bathed in that, uh, that umber, that burnt sienna, I should say, wash. So I'm just trying to get it so that we have like a little soft transition there. That's why I'm painting this big block of, of color. It's wet into wet um, because the mountain color, the snow color, everything is, is pretty wet uh, from the mountain line down. Um, I just want to keep that soft because it's going to represent some little branches that are grabbing a little bit of light. Now, I felt that I needed to go a little darker on my mountain, so um, I'm adding, again, it's the same um, color. It's burnt umber, ultramarine blue, um, obviously a water to lighten it up a little bit. Now, here I'm going back over, adding just some, um, just marks, really. I'm not looking to create any specific tree shapes yet. Um... Again, if we keep looking at the picture, we can see that there are, that we, we're going to need to go a little darker, uh, actually a lot darker, especially in the pine trees. Um, now I am thinking about and attempting to uh, paint in the trees that are in the back. So with watercolor, you, you need to work from back to front, actually in any medium you should, um, especially in landscape. So we have the sky, we have the mountain range in the midground. Um, actually, it's still background. And now I'm just adding little um, like stipples. But um, the, what I do to the brush is I try to um, mangle it. You see what I'm doing at the side where there's all those stains on the far right? What I'm doing is I'm, I'm pressing down the tip of the brush to get a broken up um, uh, pattern. Um, I don't want little dots. I want more of an erratic shape. Um, more, the more the erratic shapes there are in the painting, the more there's abstraction. And that abstraction is going to give us the illusion and the impression of these trees in the distance without doing too much detail. Um, now here I'm just adding a little bit more um, green because we're starting to go from that orange a little further almost like the mid-ground trees within that cluster of pine trees there and um, just adding a few more uh, golden or actually burnt sienna uh, that, that color is burnt sienna, um, cadmium orange, 
just to keep it. And I think there's a little quinacridin um, red in there too. Um, that's kind of giving me that little pink tone too. Um, if you don't have that quinacridin red, uh, you can just add um, alizarin crimson to your orange color and you'll probably get the same type of color. Um, the trees are basically sap green, uh, burnt umber to get them a little darker and less green just to neutralize them. And um, that's what I'm using now. Uh, there is a little bit of blue because they are uh, evergreens. Evergreens have a tendency to be a little cooler. Um, if you guys want to go even more cool on this, definitely do it. Um, I think I'm keeping my palette a little on the warm side. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm just adding another tree. There are more warms. You can actually see this is, actually, this is the color of the sky, which is cerulean blue and ultramarine blue. And you can almost see that, that color. Um, in, in that tree that's in the center there. Um, we're going to be going back and forth and adding more uh, trunks. We want to try to create a mass. And I found by just putting in those little lines, those vertical lines, well, they're not exactly vertical, but they are um, registering as vertical. Um, you want to try to get those in there just to create some like a framework for the mass of trees. Um, think about that. I'm putting in some texture, a little dry brush. Um, now the brush I'm using there is a number 10. Um, actually, no, that's a number eight. Yes, that's a number eight. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's black, uh, silver black velvet great brushes um they're half um squirrel hair and half uh nylon and they really hold a lot of paint um and they do all sorts of things that the more expensive brushes do all right so now um yeah i'm getting darker as i come to the foreground as you can see we're getting darker and darker um and those trees that are now in the distance, they're starting to set back more and more. And uh, so basically this whole painting is an exercise in trees. Um, the evergreen trees, and then of course, the um, just a few, uh, which I don't really know what they are. Um, I'm gonna, s I don't know, I'm not even gonna take a guess at them. Uh, the trees that are in the inset picture. Um, and they're kind of, I like the way that they're just sort of standing there in this, um, uh, those strong vertical lines. I don't know, something about those um, trees that caught my eye on this composition. All right, so now I'm working on the pine trees obviously on the left side of the painting. Now this painting is square um, and uh, I wanted to try to tackle a square composition. Um, don't really do too many square paintings unless they're sketches but um, I kind of like this uh, this format and um, we might do some more. <clears throat> Now, um, what are the benefits of doing a square composition? Um, well, you don't have the long rectangular shapes that you have to fill in and balance. Uh, square paintings usually are easier to balance out because they are square. Most of the elements fit within that framework or I should say like square format. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, this again is the uh, sap green. There's uh, there's a lot of different color in here. I'm actually um, putting some yellow, some cadmium yellow into burnt sienna, adding that to the green. Um, I want to try to create more than just one green. 
uh, I want to try to get as few colors, as, as, well, as, as more, I want to try to get as many colors in as I can with, um, but keeping everything sort of harm um, harmonized as well. So, now that is a tree. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, that tree um, that's in the foreground I did have to add a little bit of my Pro White to that. Uh, Pro White is just a uh, an opaque white. You can use any kind of paint that's in your kit. If you have Chinese white or um, titanium white, you can use that as well. <clears throat> now I'm just looking for some interest in the foreground starting to mark. I still have a lot more to go on the trees, but I want to start creating things that um, are going to just help the composition. Um, now you see that painting, that, that tree really just started with a big, uh, just one broad side of the brush, um, almost a dry brush effect there. Okay, so as you can see, the shapes don't have to be exact. Um, they should be, you know, they should be bold, but not, you know, not too detailed and not too um, contoured. Okay, try to keep keep the trees open. Um, here I sprayed a little bit of water because I wanted some of those effects of the snow just to sort of blend in. I wanted to try to keep that sense of... Um, of soft snow in the shadow. And that's why there's a lot of blue in there. Um, usually it, it registers as a cool blue tone. Um, and I think that's all I do there. Um, going back to the tree, I go back, I add some lighter tone, and then I add some dark tones. You'll see how that starts to progress. But what I like to do here is I like to kind of work all around. Um, you know, uh, try to s see what the painting is looking like. This painting is relatively small. I'd say it's 11 by 11, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, so I can just look at the whole painting from an arm's length away. But you should always check to see how your composition is coming. Now, what we're doing is the progression of this painting, obviously, is back to front. And, um, but... It doesn't mean you can't go to the into the back, which I do. Um, I just tried to do something there with using uh, a broken brush, like made into a point to get the uh, um, the branches. It didn't work. Um, probably I need more more paint, and uh, they might work with other types of trees, but not these spindly ones. Um, yeah. So here, if you wanted to go. Uh, actually add more of those spindly branches, you can. Um, just remember that, you know, you want to just try to get a, a nice impression. Um, you don't have to do every little one. I think just a, just a few, just to give the, the feeling. Now I'm just using, oh, uh, important point. Uh, I am using a rigger brush. Um, and that rigger brush is an Escada, Escoda, number two. It's called the uh, Versatil. Okay, it's synthetic, um, and it's made in Spain, Barcelona, actually. <clears throat> okay, so um, now that brush, I like to, you know, that's why I wanted a good one, because I wanted it to always behave, and since I only really have one, to use, I try to keep that one in shape. Um, okay, so <clears throat> actually, as you can see, I'm adding little bits of cool blue to the trees. Now, this is kind of hard to do when you're painting um, to, well, we could have used masking fluid. I don't think it really needed it. I want it, again, to progress the painting. Um, so I'm adding a little bit of the cool blue. You could, you could actually um, go back and scrub some of the, the paint off where the trees are and then add another wash if you'd like. 
Um, I think that's another alternative. Uh, some people don't like to use white in their watercolors. I use anything that's going to get the effect. Um, so, okay, so here we're going with the little bit of light color, a um, little blue, to, mixed with that pro white, by the way. So, um, everything that you see here has little bits of pro white. You can't see it, but I am actually mixing it right on my plastic type tabletop. So, it actually acts as a, <laughs> as a watercolor palette, too. So, um, yeah, so there's going to be more texture there, a lot more texture as we go. Um, you can see it's starting to form. Um, we're, we're getting some tree, you know, more tree shapes. Um, I think I do get darker in some of the trees now, too, because now that we have the darker trees in the foreground, um, we can start balancing out those trees in the distance or in, in the midground, rather. And you can see there's more, what I'm doing here is I'm creating like a darker uh, patch. Um, what I want to try to do is unify um, that background. It's getting a little spotty, so I need something to bring it together. That's why I'm adding that little line um, back there too. And, and also in the picture, there is what seems to be a road um, I decided not to put that in because I thought that would be too much of a distraction. I wanted my woods to look like they were, you know, that there was no road, that it was a place, you know, in the woods where you came upon in this small clearing. Um, and here I'm just adding, again, th actually this is not the rigger brush. That brush I'm using there is a number six bl uh, uh, silver black velvet. Um, just a, a brown brush. Um, I'm using that because I want slightly bigger shapes too. Um, I want to vary the size. Now here I go again back into the woods here adding more and deeper color. Um, you can get very deep just be careful not to go too dark. You don't want you don't want like a wall of bluish green in the painting you want you still want to try to keep it open a little bit and let some of that light kind of come through so there is that sort of blockade of pine trees right at the midground um, as you can see in the picture probably closer to picture up to the right side um, and there we go so there's more now we're coming to almost the end um, there's a little bit more interest. Um, I think I go back with a little bit of, of the lighter tone. Um, uh, to, I, I believe there was some what looked like some birch trees too in there. So uh, at some point I do come back and put in some of the birch trees. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to, but they are there. And I think here we go. These are some of the birch trees. Um, if they're looking a little too bright, just tap them with your finger and they'll usually get a little darker if they come out too bright. And uh, there it is. Okay, so we're almost there. Now, actually, there were some little uh, areas on the trunks that were receiving a little bit of yellow light, that, that warm light from the sun on the left. So I'm going back in and I'm hitting little bits of that. Um, and again, more little branches. If they again, if they become too ob obtrusive, just knock them down with a little paper towel. All right, they should just be, you know, very few. Just a suggestion of those little leaves that are sort of contrasting in the reverse. Um, and I think we are almost done here. Um, I'm adding a little bit more. I want a little bit more of that feeling where those trees are solid, solid on the horizon, or at least the ground um, surface. Now I'm adding a little bit of that yellow that I added to the, uh, the tree trunk on the left, uh, just to give it a little bit more life. Um, maybe there's some branches or trunks in the distance that are picking up some more light. And, um, yeah. 
a little bit more. You can add as much as you want, and there it is. There's the painting. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys later. Bye now.